everyone, I'm Kath and this video is going to be a little different to the ones that you're used to. I usually do um, hair and makeup videos but today it's something a little more serious. Um, I want to discuss early menopause. So in a nutshell, um, I turned 40 in January and um, in the winter of 2017 I was, I hate the word, I want to say diagnosed as going through early menopause and um, basically I've been going through it for now for like a year and a half so I want to talk to you about my experience and what I feel about it, the changes that I've made to my body, the changes that my body has made to me and uh, just basically to talk you through it and if you're going through a similar thing hopefully this will help. So uh, let's get into it. So, in the um, summer of 2017, I noticed that I was going through some changes and the main one for me was that my periods were becoming quite erratic and when I say erratic, I mean they just weren't coming at all and I was getting really nervous, I kept taking pregnancy tests, I'm not joking, like every single week and um, at the time I worked in a job that was quite stressful, I worked in customer service, I was dealing with customers on the phone, via email and sometimes face to face um, and it was summertime, and I was working in an office where they didn't have any air conditioning, I worked near a window but I would notice myself getting really hot and bothered and my temper was just like, I had the shortest fuse and I didn't ever be like that. I was never really that kind of person. I'm usually quite patient and I'm usually quite chilled, but every time anybody phoned me up or said something on the phone that annoyed me, I would put the phone down and I would really flare up and swear and get really pissed off. And um, that's just not me. And, and obviously, as I say, working in central London, I was going on and off the tube. Um, so I was going from hot weather to cooler weather and I was going, I was having hot flushes and didn't realise it. So I would just thought it was down to the fact that I was working in an office with no aircon, but I was annoyed because of the customers. So I didn't really think much of all this kind of thing. And um, when I was getting less and less periods, I was taking these pregnancy tests and it was actually making me broke, like I was spending so much money on them. And in the end I got fed up and thought I need to see a doctor, like this isn't okay. So I went to the doctor explained the symptoms and he sent me to hospital for a blood test and um, when I got to the hospital I took the blood test done and everything and it was one of those ones where you have to fast for 24 hours um, because it, it manages your glucose and estrogen levels and stuff so um, after I had that done two days later the doctor called me and wanted to see me in his office so obviously I'm fearing the worst at this point I'm really scared um, so I went to the doctor to see what he said. I got an appointment for the very next day, which never happens in my doctors, usually it's like at least a week. When I got there, I walked into the room and there were two doctors and I honestly thought I, I was going to hear the C word. I actually thought they were going to tell me something horrible was happening to me. Um, so. In the end, they started to, you know, talk about my lifestyle and, da -da -da, and I just asked them, I was like, well, have I got cancer? And they'd said no, and I was literally the happiest I've ever been in my life. And then they explained that I was going through the perimenopause, and they asked me about my mum, and if my mum went through the menopause early. I know that she did, she went through it at 40, um, but at the time she was suffering from Crohn's disease. So she wasn't very well, and she had lots of major surgery, which can bring on menopause early, so I thought, it was related to that. So when they told me I was going through early menopause, I was ecstatic and they couldn't understand why. But I guess when you think you might have cancer and then someone tells you you're going through menopause, you're like, who cares? That's fine. And the main thing the doctors were concerned about was the fact that I was, at the time, 38 and didn't have children. And I explained that I never wanted children um, because obviously when you go through menopause, your, basically your estrogen levels drop, you stop to produce eggs, therefore your body kind of, as an older woman, your body goes into shutdown where they don't, you can't have children anymore. Um, your ovaries stop working. And this, the menopause tends to happen when you're 50 odd. So I'm getting this very, very, very early. So they were concerned that I would want children. So I said, no, that wasn't even a concern. Um, 
and they, they didn't believe me and sort of, you know, tried to convince me to freeze my eggs and stuff. And I was like, no, 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 it's fine. Um, I never wanted kids. But then when someone actually tells you, you might not be able to have them very, very, very soon and you still don't really care that much, I knew that I was fine. So I didn't want to freeze my eggs. It was good. So I left there feeling quite positive. They gave me a prescription for HRT um, and, it, and it explained that I should start taking HRT immediately. And the reason being is that because when you're in your 50s and you get your menopause, as your body's getting older, you know, your bones and stuff start to get less dense. They start to deteriorate a little bit. Your body starts to get older. So when you go through menopause early in life, you are in danger of early osteoporosis, uh, bone damage, all that kind of fun stuff. So they recommended I start taking HRT immediately, so that was fine. The first hurdle for me was the fact that they gave me a prescription for HRT tablets. So I went to the doctors and I went to the chemist, got them, and when I got them home, opened them, the first ingredient that I saw was lactose. Now I'm lactose intolerant, so that didn't work for me. Uh, so I had to go back to the chemist and speak to them about what I could have. And they then prescribed me um, HRT patches called Everol, if you can read that. And they're basically, it's called Everol Conti and it's a dual patch for HRT. So I've been using these and you basically have to stick them around your hip area. So I, as this TMI, I don't know, I stick them on my butt cheeks. So you have to change these twice a week. So I have one butt cheek for one side of the week and one for the other side of the week. It works for me. Um, and the minute I started taking the HRT, I noticed my moods were better. I wasn't having hot flushes anymore. I was sleeping better because you had the night sweats and all that kind of crap. And I started to feel a bit more like me. Almost within the first week, I couldn't believe it. And I was shocked that maybe for three or four, five months, I'd been suffering with hot flashes, mood swings, all this other stuff, having no idea why. So I was initially really relieved that I could put an end to all this stuff because it wasn't nice and not knowing why, you know, I was just in a job that I, I found quite stressful and I was getting a lot of crap all day every day. So I just assumed that I was really moody because I didn't like my job very much at the time and that people were just being really nasty and that, you know, blah, 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 blah. Um, and then when I started to read up about the HRT and what it does and what it kind of, the, the, what it replaces in your body, so it basically tricks your body into thinking that it's younger than it is. Um, so I was starting to get periods again, not properly, just like little shows and all that kind of thing. And I still get them now, but not every month like I used to, maybe one every three to four months. Um, again, it's not a full period like you're normally used to, it's just a bit different. So basically that means that HRT is doing its thing, that my body still is producing eggs, it's still doing what it should, just in a slower motion. So I'm still definitely going through the change, that will not change, you can't reverse it. Once it starts, that's it. But um, at least it's kind of slowing it down. And uh, my doctor also recommended me to take supplements. Um, so basically the main problem for me is bones. I'm really scared of, I don't want to be in a wheelchair by the time I'm 40 or 50 or 60, like I don't want that to happen. Um, so I'm trying to change my lifestyle to help with that. So I started to take um, vitamins, and I take quite a few, so you might be quite shocked. I mean, people might say, I'll take multivitamins, but I need specific vitamins for specific things. So I've started to take zinc. Now, zinc is great for um, normal function of the immune system and maintenance of normal skin, hair, and nails. So they're very good because I've noticed in my blood test that my zinc was low. So these are maximum strength ones. Um, I take magnesium for the maintenance of bone health. And they're very good as well. So um, bones, bones and teeth contribute to the reduction of tiredness and fatigue because you do get quite tired whilst going through the change. Um, I also take vitamin C to help support the immune system. Uh, so I take a thousand milligrams of them a day. And then my favorite one, not, is the Max Strength gelatin-free cod liver oil uh, for omega-3 for helping uh, maintain maintain healthy bones and muscles especially formulated with a blend of fish oils 
So those I take every day without fail. And I have a little pill box that I fill up and take to work with me. And I take them all in the morning after breakfast. Then there's no excuses. Um, and I have to say that since I've started taking them, I've only ever gotten sick. Usually once a year I get like a really bad cold. Um, but touch wood, I haven't been ill with any other things. So I definitely think all this combination of stuff is working for me. Um, but then there are the different stages that you go through. Once you start to deal with the actual, what you need to take, then you have to deal with the hormones that are going on around it. So um, it's kind of like going through puberty again. And that wasn't fun the first time around. So in a nutshell, um, I found myself getting in mood swings, for example. Um, I find my, my fuse is very short. I get really short tempered which isn't ideal um, not all the time but just sometimes um, sometimes you want to cry and have no idea why like all this last week as for example I've kind of struggled a little bit like I feel tired in the mornings and um, I haven't really felt like my normal bubbly self I find having conversations with people you know on the phone and things quite annoying and I've just not been myself but I know that will change I know that's you know that will that will come and go like all these things do um weight is another one I find it harder to lose weight um especially around my stomach area which has never been an easy area for me anyway but you get that whole middle age spread situation which isn't fun it's like your lower abdomen and you find it sticks out a bit more and your food automatically goes there no matter how little you eat no matter what you do no matter how many carbs you cut out just goes right there and then on the flip side of that you also because you're feeling a bit fed up or a little bit moody you crave rubbish food so all those factors together are quite annoying so you have you know your mood swings you have your craving food but then you know if you eat it you're going to get chubbier and it's just shit that side of it isn't fun and um, I can't dress it up. I can't be like, oh, it's fine because it happens. You have to just deal with it. It's not ideal. I don't like that side of it, but it is what it is. And you know that it will pass. You know that it's hormonal. So I try and put everything into perspective. Like, this isn't my mood. This is what my body's doing. I just kind of need to go with it. So if your body says you want sweets, I'm not saying give into it, but try and fight it. If you really can't have something and don't sweat it, but don't get into the habit of doing that, it's not fun. Um, another thing that I did to help with this is stop drinking um, alcohol. I haven't had a drink since August last year. And I find this has definitely helped me because obviously at the time when I was going through the, the blues, the misery bit of it, I was drinking quite a lot. Um, and not even really realising it, I would go out with my friends and have a few glasses of wine and I'd backed up then I was working at Central London so I'd go out two, three times a week, have a couple of glasses of wine, maybe three, and um, then at the weekends I would have a drink and I felt like I needed to drink, it was one of those things that it made me happier and I felt like if I was a bit blue, I had a drink, it would make everything better and it kind of doesn't so I stopped drinking, that really helped um, and again it's a test of willpower because I know that drinking isn't good for me, it's not good for any of us, but I've used it as a bit of a crutch, which I really didn't want to do. So I've managed to cut that out now, which is good. Um, and that helped with weight loss as well. I have lost a little bit of weight. I've dropped a dress size since, I don't know, um, January or something, without really trying. I've been trying to do as much exercise as I can. Um, so my exercise routine at the moment is I I have to go to the station to walk to work to go to work every morning. I used to get the bus. Um, it's a 20 minute walk. So because the weather's nicer now, as you can see the sun is shining, I've been walking to work um, at the station 20 minutes. I've started to walk home as well. Um, my building's lovely and they do lots of things for people within the buildings. They have a fitness class on a Tuesday. Um, so I do a body conditioning class on a Tuesday after work. They do Pilates um, in the office as well on a Thursday lunchtime. So I do that. And um, I go to the gym uh, Saturday and Sunday. So I'm essentially doing four days of exercise a week. Um, in the mornings as well, I get up and do 100 sit-ups before I even get in the shower because of the whole lower abdomen issue. Um, so I'm doing as much as I physically can. Um, I don't like exercise. I never really have been a big fan. I love the results, but the actual act of doing it 
it's never really been my thing and especially when you're feeling a bit blue or a bit moody or a bit not bothered you'll say your body it does get tired quicker and you find yourself less asked to do things like my boy I feel sorry for my boyfriend because he's always like oh, let's go for a walk let's do this let's do that and the time that I have to myself I'm just like oh I just don't want to I just want to stay in and when I do go out on a walk I do enjoy it but not all the time and it's one of those situations where oh, I just I, I, I just I find myself having to really push myself to do things and that I'm also putting down to the whole menopause thing because I never really used to be like that so everything does seem a bit more of an effort uh, so yeah so basically that's my experience so far at the moment now I'm about a year and a half into my transition now the transition from going to perimenopause into full menopause can take 10 years it can take two years it can take so it's, it totally depends on the person the time you can call it going into the full-on menopause is when you haven't had a period for a whole 12 months so at the moment I had one about three weeks ago two or three weeks ago um, so I'm still definitely in that perimenopause stage so I'm still just getting into it but I have noticed the differences I have I do feel different and it's fine it's all part of growing up growing older I just deal with it but sometimes it is quite tricky and I do feel for you if you're going through it as well um but it's not uncommon for people of our age people in their 40s it's not uncommon to go through the menopause and I thought I was one of the only ones I felt like my mum did it and I talked to her about it but at the time like I said she had Crohn's so she had more important things to worry about like the menopause like the drop in the ocean for her she was worrying about just not dying which obviously is quite a big deal um, so the menopause was just one of a million of things at the time she had to deal with and she doesn't really remember dealing with it um, at all. She was just taking HRT and it was one of the things that she had to take along with all her other medications. So yeah, um, that's really it for me. I, It's not the worst thing ever, it's not the best thing ever, but you have to be prepared for change and you have to roll with it and understand that your body is battling something in there and you have to go with it so read up on it read up on the things that make you better so eat healthier um drink less or quit drinking smoking also very 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 bad for menopausal people because when you go through menopause like i said your bones suffer your teeth suffer your gums suffer you're essentially getting older so putting cigarettes into that it's just awful so try and quit smoking whenever you can. I haven't smoked for 13 years. I stopped smoking when I was 27 and um, it's the best thing I ever did. I might do a video on that at some point, but honestly, smoking sucks. And yeah, take vitamins, um, get more exercise, do the things that you don't really want to do because they're probably the things that are good for you. Sitting home and wallowing about it isn't good. If you do want children and you're going through it and you can't have them, I do feel for you. Um, it must be awful to be thinking, okay, we'll wait until the perfect time to have kids and then be told you can't. I can't imagine what that would be like. Like I said, i have lucky in the sense that I've never had that desire. Maybe somewhere in my psyche or subconscious, I knew this was going to happen and I, I haven't got that chromosome or that thing in my brain that makes me as a woman want children because a lot of people find it very strange that I've never once wanted kids like ever in my life I've never had a moment where I've gone maybe I should do that but it, you know but um I, I do feel for you and if you have any questions any comments leave them below or if you want to dm me please do on instagram I'm nail the day as well I won't be posting this on instagram but if you want something a bit more private feel free and uh, I might do a follow up sort of every six months or so just to let you know how I'm getting on. If this is a popular video, we'll see what happens. But I just wanted to share my story because when I was going through this initially and I searched on YouTube for it, there wasn't many videos around. Not many people want to go that deep into their own personal body. It's a lot to share. And I try have tried not to overshare. I hope it's been good for you so um yeah i'll catch you in my next video god knows what it would be it might be more beauty stuff but i thank you for watching and uh yeah i hope you enjoyed it and i hope it's been informative